Ahead on early birds, the Falcons look to strike gold in their passing game against the 49ers. We'll get you ready as Atlanta looks to get back to 500. Plus, shocks in the film room, and Atlanta running back proves he's more than just a supporting actor. And what led to the Deion Jones trade? That more on early birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. He's DJ. I'm Justin. We got the guys from the Bay in town. Falcons mm -hmm. helping them send them back out west with a big ooh, old L. Uh, ooh, after a loss, it's always the worst trip. So. Would be a long flight. Well, we get <laughs> things started with a drive, the opening drive. Falcons and 49ers tomorrow here on Fox 5. We'll start with the quarterback spot. Marcus Mariota coming in off back-to-back -back games with under 150 yards passing. Seven fumbles already this year, but he's done plenty of good, including with his feet. So, shock. five games in, what have you seen? Justin, I think that's where you start with his feet because his feet has given this team a lot of things to be excited about, a lot of things to be happy about, to be frank. And defenses have to know where he's going to be at because he can take off at any given time. He does a good thing with carrying out his face because that holds the backside in and runs games sometimes. He also made some good throws here and there. He had to remember, he hasn't played in over two years. Right. Spot duty with the with the Raiders. Now he's getting five games in. He's got a chance. He's still learning how to play in a system. And I asked Marcus Mariota this week how he assesses himself through five games. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's been okay, right? Like, we're two and three. We got to be better on third down. We got to be better in the red zone. I, I really don't sit back and reflect, especially six weeks in. Right. You know, I, I tend to just kind of let things play out. Um, I try to be what I can be to this team and um, just go out there and make plays when we can. So let's talk about those 49ers, who, by the way, spent the week in West Virginia after playing the Panthers. Take me home, country roads. Falcons <laughs> will have their eyes on Debo Samuel. He can do it all, kind of pioneered that Cordero Patterson role of wide receiver turned running back. Though he hasn't been getting as many rushes this year, just four total through the last two games. But Shock, still a dangerous guy. Yeah, anytime the ball is in his hands, he has an opportunity to make something spectacular happen with it. And he's an unbelievable player when he has it. He can play outside, he can play inside, he can put him in the backfield. Kyle Shanahan loves this jack of all trades, kind of Swiss Army knife guy that can do it. And Falcons have to tackle well when he gets the football in his hand because he is nasty with the ball in his hand. And guys got to make sure they get him to the ground and he can make it a big play. Our guy TQ has something to say about stopping number 19. He's a pretty unique player. Um, you know, he calls himself a wide back, and hey, he's a pretty physical runner. He breaks a lot of tackles. He, you know, they get him in space. He makes plays. Total football player. Complete football player. Put it that way. Uh, other than probably playing left tackle, I think he could play most positions on the field on offense or defense. Maybe not three technique or nose, but I'm sure he'd probably try it. I'd actually like to see that <laughs> playing uh, three that technique. That would be crazy. As we wrap up the opening drive, uh, let's talk a little bit about Deion Jones. Shock traded earlier this week to the Browns for a late round draft pick. Remember Deion's second round pick in 2016. He started 83 of his 85 career games, Man. but he kind of fell out of the team's plans this year. So DJ, was it a scheme fit? Did he just need a fresh start? I think a little bit of both. I think he just didn't fit exactly what Dean Pease and that defense wanted to do. They wanted to be a little bit bigger. They wanted to be, you know, faster. They wanted to be longer. And that's what they got in the guys they got now. So it just was in a situation where he just was not the right fit for this type of defense. And now he's getting the fresh start he wants in Cleveland. Yeah, Deion heading to join that Cleveland Browns defense. Well, welcome into Early Birds alongside former Falcons quarterback DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder, and we also have a matchup of real strengths yeah. in this game when Atlanta has the ball. Falcons, the number three run game in the NFL. The 49ers, the league's best run defense. Yeah, this is going to be strap it on, make sure you're physical, ready to go, because both these you know, entities want to stop each other. It's going to be tough to see what happens in this ball game, but good on good. Got to bring you best. Going to be a physical game. Another physical game for sure. Well, shock is everybody at home is saying, I left my heart in DJ's film room. Let's go. I like that. There we go. Yeah. Every once in a while, find a good one. All right. <laughs> go warm up the Telestrator. Right. We'll see you in a few. But first, sometimes NFL careers don't go exactly as originally scripted. Falcons running back Avery Williams took some rewrites by the higher ups at the network, in this case, Arthur Smith and ran with his new castings and shifting to offense from being a defensive back. No surprise for someone whose mom is a well-known television producer. Pam VC, the former executive producer of CSI New York, among the lines on her IMDb page. Avery and I spoke one-on-one -on -one this week, and I asked him about the Hollywood moments from when he was a kid. I can remember the first time playing Grand Theft Auto. Um, so I was playing GTA with one of the actors. <laughs> 
You know, when they're not filming, they have their little trailer or whatever that they go to. And Eddie Cahill had his video game set up in, the, in his trailer. And me and my brother went there and he taught us how to play GTA. So um, that's something I'll never forget. Did living in that world make you at all say, I could be an actor, I want to do that. Or did you make you say, I never want to do this? To be honest, when I was younger, I didn't really pay much attention to it. I haven't seen, you know, what they do behind the scenes. Now that I'm older, I have a lot more respect for what they do. You know, having to do, you know, one scene for an hour or so seems like really uh, tiresome and exhausting. So, yeah, I don't know. That, that would be really challenging to do. All right, from acting roles to football roles, how's life as a running back? It's going well. Yeah, it's going well. I love it. Um, I'm extremely blessed to be on the offensive side of the ball and just to help this team, you know, in whatever way it is, um, whether I'm getting the ball or whether I'm not getting the ball. Um, I love being out there and, you know, helping my teammates. Do you see any of your return skills show up in your running game? I, I ask because I remember people talked about that with CP a lot. Super explosive returner. He kind of brings that one cut style. Do you see any of that in your running style? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, it's really just fundamentals of the game. You can see it from CP, um, just how how aggressive and how, how hard he runs, you know, with the ball in his hand on, on returns. And, you know, you see it through and through on the offensive side. How about you personally? Are there areas that you look at? I'm still working on these areas. This is what it's going to take to kind of take that next step. You know, every aspect of this game. Um, you know, this is my first time playing offense since high school. And, you know, I'm always asking, you know, as much questions as possible. Because there's always things to learn, fine tuned details that you can learn, you know, from guys that have, you know, a lot of experience on offense. So um, I'm always just looking to get better. It's going to be a matchup of strengths this weekend. You guys have the number three rushing offense. The 49ers have the number one rushing defense what's it going to take to come out on top in that matchup uh, we know it's just going to be a physical ball game um, you know so as long as we you know stick to who we are and we play a physical game and finish and fight the way we know how to um, you know we'll, we'll look to get the result that we want it's time to get some game intel from shop you're invited into the film room so cut the lights and let's get started all right, Justin, we just talked about how Marcus Mariota has had seven fumbles. He's under 150 yards passing, but I'm going to give my QB some love. I'm going to talk about his toughness, things he does that never shows up on the stat sheet, but ends up being the critical point in why the Falcons have been successful. Now, this is a simple third down here. You're going to get an inside little out route by London here. He's going to go outside and just inside and release and be outside. But the, they're going to blitz, and when they blitz and come through here, he has to stand in there and complete a pass. Now, let's watch this. This play gets started. Watch this add-on linebacker. Here's the add-on linebacker, Devin White. And watch, he now he gets his football out with a guy in his face, and London, his ball gets out. But I want to show it to you from the back end. This is the toughness part that I want to show you from Marcus Mariota. Here's the add-on linebacker. This is Devin White, downhill, fast, physical linebacker. Watch him standing here knowing he has to take a hit and deliver a strike. To him. Now watch, here's the glut right here. Now he's standing in there. He could easily run, try to get out of it, or just throw it away. And watch when he lets this ball go. The play continue, lets this ball go. Look, he is just turning his head around just to get this ball out. And now he throws the accurate ball and stands in there and takes a shot from Devin White and completes this ball. And guess what? Third down completions. These are the things that come up for Marcus Mariota that makes it perfect and makes it work for this offense. If he continues to do this, this offense will continue to stride and have big plays. Justin, I like what he's doing. Yeah, third down is going to be critical this week against the 49ers. Thanks, Shock. More to come on Early Birds. Rocky Top will be rocking today. Michael Jenkins here to get you ready for undefeated Tennessee against undefeated Alabama. Plus, they do all types of things, but if you know your rules and you know what you're doing on defense, you'll be all right. Richie Grant says follow the rules and you'll be all right. That could end to a big pass breakup. We go deep with the Falcons safety next. Hey Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. 
Well, welcome back into Early Birds. We welcome in former Falcons wide receiver Michael Jenkins. Might be the best slate of college football games we've had all year. I counted six games with both teams in the top 25. I'm psyched. I'm, me too. Great day to watch college football. I'm going from here to the couch for the rest of the day. All right. Perhaps the marquee game today is on Rocky Top. Tennessee and Alabama, both undefeated. Crimson Tide, maybe not the force they've been. Questions at quarterback. Meanwhile, yeah. Tennessee, they got to be feeling good. Knoxville's going to be crazy. Give me your breakdown on this one. Tennessee's feeling great, but obviously their offense is versus Bama's defense, mm -hmm. both top 10 respectively. And then you add in Bryce Young. Will he play? Will he not play? I can't see Bama beating Tennessee at Tennessee without Bryce Young. You need that Heisman finalist. You need the, the talented quarterback. Could be talented quarterbacks on both sides. Here's Nick Saban offering his thoughts on the high-flying balls. Tennessee's got an outstanding team. They're undefeated. Um, Josh has done a really, really good job there. Um, probably one of the most explosive comp uh, offenses, if not the most explosive offense, you know, in the country. Yeah, Tennessee and Alabama today at 3.30. All right, after a rocky couple weeks, Georgia maybe got back on track somewhat uh, last week. <laughs> okay, give me your, are they back on track? Where are they there right now? Georgia fans, there's nothing to worry about. Okay. DJ, everything is okay. You're favored <laughs> by 38 against Vandy. They'll be fine. All right, so 3.30 today against Vanderbilt. So real quick, what, what do you want to see in a game that might be lopsided? Well, just come out and play to their standards. Come out from, from the first play and play at a high level. Taking on Vanderbilt today, here's what Stetson Bennett had to say. You know, I think we're getting too just like, ah, well, you know, it wasn't perfect, so I'm going to be miserable. Like, no, like, we played a good game. Um, we got a lot of things to get better at. But we're going to, that's all it is. We just get better at them for next week so we can be better next week. All right, and finally, let's get to your home turf, the Big Ten. I know you've been yeah. itching to talk some Big Ten football. Big noon kickoff, just a few hours here on Fox. Penn State and Michigan, both undefeated. Two-part question. One, who wins? And two, whoever you're picking to win, can they challenge your Ohio State Buckeyes? One, I can't pick <laughs> UM. So Penn State will win. Okay. And, you know, yes, they can challenge Ohio State. I mean, they're a physical. Both of these teams are physical, mm -hmm. running the football type team. So it's going to be a grinded out type game between them two. And then we'll see what happens later on down the road. Okay. All right. Can't bring himself <laughs> to pick Michigan. That game coming up at noon here on Fox 5. DJ, I'm sure you'll be watching that one once we get to Athens, right? Oh, no doubt. I, I cannot wait to watch that drink. I appreciate that. I'm, yeah. Dogs will be good, so I yeah. appreciate it. All right. Quarterbacks are always trying to use their eyes to manipulate the defense. The best defenders have to know when to look for clues and when to ignore the QB's eyes. They also can't get fooled by the other eye candy before a play. Here's safety Richard Grant to explain in this week's Going Deep. Well, I mean, before, before you even get that far, you have to know formations. Okay. And you have to know down the distance because that tells a lot. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, certain certain situations call for certain formations or certain personnel, like a bigger guy, a faster guy, stuff like that. So I'm already, so let's skip past that. I got that locked in. Mm -hmm. So now a quarterback. If I am in the post, mm -hmm. which primarily you'll be reading, you know what I mean, quarterback. So if I am in the post, I'm just scanning his eyes, man. So typically, they'll take you where you need to go. Mm -hmm. But that's why I said a lot of this stuff come before the snap. You want to see the formation. You want to see the personnel. You want to see down the distance. You want to know what defense you're in. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you how you can play. Do the eyes ever lie to you? Are they ever trying to manipulate you? Absolutely. Can you avoid it? Offenses do all this <laughs> wishy wash and they do all types of things like motions and double shifts and, oh, not a running back, a jet. Not, they do all types of things. But if you know your rules and you know what you're doing on defense, you'll be all right. Know your rules and you'll be all right. All right, we got more to come on early birds. It'll be a big week for Falcons fashion as the red helmets make a triumphant comeback. Their history still to come. You're watching early birds presented by Mercedes Benz on your official home for Falcons football. Fox 5 Atlanta. You see it on just about every ankle in the NFL and then cut up and torn off all over the locker room floors after games are over. Athletic tape, it's everywhere in football, but there's a lot more to it than you or I might think. Dr. Kyle Hammond takes you behind the scenes in this week's Emory Roads Recovery. Ankle taping here that we're going to demonstrate is one of the most common types of taping that we'll do for our athletes and um, a lot of athletes who have either been dealing with ankle sprains or have had an ankle sprain will sometimes use ankle taping to help prevent that or treat that um, and, and allow them to play safe, safely. So this is our Cohen, he's one of our uh, athletic trainers. 
and he is a taping expert. <laughs> a professional taper, they may say. Oh, mm -hmm. So each athletic trainer or individual who does taping has their own technique, but generally they're done in a specific way to help stabilize the joint and secure the joint. But it's got to be done pretty fast. And then a lot of times we'll have to do this on the field. And so in the field, obviously in the heat of the battle during the game, we got to be fast doing this as well. There's lots of players who are getting taped. You know, there's a little bit of variations. Certain guys like it done certain ways, um, or for dealing with maybe a, um, inside of the ankle versus the outside of the ankle, um, that can be done differently. And then obviously other joints can be taped as well. Wrists, thumbs, we can stabilize thumbs that have been sprained, wrists that have been sprained. Um, we can even do taping on the knees for certain knee injuries as well. So there's a lot of different methodologies. All right, more to come after the break. Our resident fashion expert, My House, will take a look at what Falcons fans will be seeing red tomorrow. That's next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. All right, now it's time for our weekly fashion recap. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't, wouldn't ask us to do that. Um, for the first time since 2013, the Falcons busted out the red helmets Ooh. this week. I saw them at practice. Have you yeah. seen these things? They look good. I'm, I'm a big fan of the red helmets. I like going back, bringing back some of the old swag, the old style. And I think the fans are going to like it, too. You're going to get to see a lot of different, like, uh, shirts and jackets people trying to wear, trying to match up the, the red. So it's going to be cool to see. Yeah, that's Avery Williams when we sat down. He's a fan of them. He says yeah. the team's a fan of them. Uh, and we're a fan of our resident fashion expert. That's Miles Garrett, man, of course. Miles who joins us now to walk the runway for you with a little uniform history. Fashion is as important as anything in the NFL. Just ask Deion Sanders. Look good, feel good, feel good, play good, play good, play good. Play good. Couldn't have said it better myself. Falcons unveiling these beauties this Sunday. Why not take a look back at the history of the Falcons helmets and uniforms? We start at 1966, the inaugural season of the Dirty Birds. They have these red helmets and the black jerseys. A little bit shout out to Georgia Tech with the gold stripe on the top. Nice shout out for the Yellow Jackets. 1971, we make a little bit of a change. The red helmets and the red jerseys make their debut. A little bit of a variation of numbers. They have gray numbers, they have white numbers, white jerseys, red jerseys, doesn't matter. Red is the prominent color there. We move all the way to 1990. That's when the next biggest change occurs. Jerry Glanville with the Falcons, we go back to black. We have black helmets ushering in a new era of Atlanta Falcons football. The team makes the Super Bowl in 1998. You gotta stick with them, right? If the jerseys are working, you cannot change it. That goes all the way up until 2003. When Michael Vick is the quarterback of the team, there is a total rebrand, a new, meaner, dirty bird on the helmet. We now have red jerseys and black jerseys, and it finally takes us to 2020. The latest rebrand for the Falcons. This is the new look for the team. We've got black helmets, chrome face masks, solid touch, but I cannot wait to see these helmets make their return tomorrow afternoon at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, guys. Thanks, Miles. The red helmets will be fun to see indeed. And great trip down memory lane. That was really cool. All right, we've got so much more for you. Be sure to join us for the Dirty Bird Report tomorrow night, 11.30 p.m., wrapping up the Falcons and 49ers highlights, interviews, and so much more tomorrow, 11.30 p.m. Make sure to tune in. So, Shock, Falcons and 49ers, big opportunity for Atlanta, a tough challenge. Give me another matchup to watch in this one. I'm thinking about Keith Smith, mm -hmm. Fred Warner. Ooh. Right in the middle, you know, I got a lot of lead up on these guys a lot of in the run game we talk about it's gonna be a physical game those two guys are gonna be in the center of it as much as the Falcons want to run the football we talk about it. the 49ers want to stop the run so it's gonna be fun to watch those two go at it they probably gonna meet uh, a little over 50 times in this ball game yeah. so hopefully Keith Smith gets the best of Fred Warner in this one yeah and Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley are they guys that can maybe benefit from a fullback maybe a little bit oh, more absolutely. between the tackles oh absolutely they're definitely guys who are bowling balls of their own but I think they definitely can benefit from having a fullback in front of them that can lead and get some, get some, just create some pathways on the line for them and be able to go for it. And we'll see Avery Williams, too, getting outside the tackle. has been effective Speed. in his chances. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Well, that's it for us here on Early Birds. For our quarterback, DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Thanks for joining us. Have a good morning and a great weekend.